Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today we are going to be talking about Camera Shake because I want to, and that is all there is to it really. So let's open up Blender so we can do some Camera Shake. I'm going to be using version 2.81a, although you can use newer versions if you're watching this in the future, or older versions if you're just making bad decisions. So 2.81, make sure that's full screen so you guys can see everything. So right now we have our default scene with our camera pointing at our cube. We can go into camera view and if we play it, you know, everything's stationary because our camera's stationary. So we want to animate this in a way that's believable and looks like camera shake, which means we are going to be animating the rotation. The camera's going to be in some position. Let's say it's this position and we are just going to pivot it around. Again, it's going to be in one location and we're just moving, you know, all the rotation stuff. That is what camera shake is. So to do this, uh, we are going to use the graph editor since we want to do it with graphs and also procedurally. So let's bring this up. If I can select this, it's the hardest thing in the world. Let's select the graph editor and make sure our camera is selected. So right now the graph editor is looking uh, at our camera properties and you can see it's empty because there's nothing to animate. So I don't know why there would be any graphs. So let's give uh, the graph editor something to show us, something to animate. So to do this with your camera selected, go to the properties, that is N, and we are gonna look at our rotation. You can use any kind of rotation you want. We are gonna be using X, Y, Z, cause we're not uh, sadists. And we're just gonna I, hit I for keyframing. So now our rotation is keyframed and all this information is over here. Uh, with our camera. So we have camera action, our object transforms, that's these, and then when we open this up, only X, Y, Z is available. We can also, you know, keyframe location, and then that's going to show up, but of course we don't want that. So uh, if we zoom out, you are going to see we have X highlighted in red, because, you know, X axis is red in Blender, I guess, uh, Y, and Z. And they're all flat lines at different values because you know, 163.6, one of them zero, one of them's 46.7. Uh, they're all flat because they're not changing. They are constant. There's no change. In calculus, we would say the derivative is zero everywhere. Okay, so how do we, you know, animate this in the first place? Well, you know, we could do this manually, you know, do our camera shake like some kind of pleb. So let's say we go to frame 100. Uh, we just, you know, increase this X and then hit I keyframe rotation. You see that this updates our graphs. I mean, really, it only updates the red one, although it adds keyframes to all of them because the red one is all we've changed. So you're going to see a bit of a slope there. And then, you know, we have the most believable camera shake of all time. So this is just to illustrate that uh, I don't care how skilled you are, you're not going to be able to animate this by hand. So what we're going to do is use the procedural approach. To do this, I'm going to select. Again, we have three different channels or dimensions to think about. So we're going to start with the X dimension. Select this. Uh, go to properties of the graph editor. That is N. You might be seeing a pattern. We are going to go to modifiers. And then for modifiers, we're going to add one and we're going to add noise. Okay, cool. We got this um, X axis doing some weird kind of white noise style stuff. Let's see what it looks like from the camera view. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. <laughs> So th this looks a bit, it's a bit much, you know, this isn't born identity. We don't need, to, need it to be this shaky. Uh, so clearly we have the right kind of thing going on, but there's way too much detail. So first of all, we need this to smooth out in time. So it's less jagged. It takes more time to make motion. To do this, let me make this a bit bigger so you guys can see it. We are going to change the scale. That is scale and time. See, scaling and time of the noise. So we're just going to increase this. And you can see this kind of stretches it out horizontally in some sense. So let's stretch it out even more, something like that. And now when we watch this, you know, it's slow, which is good, but we still have the issue of um, kind of not filming what we want to film anymore, which is the amplitude of the wave. So we already talked about, it's not really the phase. We, we already talked about the period of the wave. We made it um, longer, so everything stretched out. Now we want to talk about the amplitude, which is the size up and down of the wave. We're going to bring this down, obviously. So let's bring down the strength, which is, it's called strength. Now when we play this, we get a very gentle motion. And of course, if you want a very shaky thing, you can make it have more shake in terms of the strength of it, and also make it more frequent. 
but I'm going to settle for something like 0.1. So there you go. And if you want, you know, to create new types of shakes with the same, um, you know, same harshness, all you have to do is change this offset, which is just going to shift over the wave, but give us a new uh, camera shake segment to use. Okay, cool. So our X is moving, but you know, our cameraman isn't a crane necessarily that can only pivot on the X axis. Uh, we need to do this for Y and Z. And we can either do all that work again, or you see this copy paste, we are gonna use it. Copy, this is gonna copy our modifier. We're gonna go to Y, Euler rotation. We are gonna hit paste. What do you expect to happen? Well, now you see it's not only pivoting on X, but also Y but you're gonna notice that it's kind of, I mean, if you're very observant, you're gonna notice that it's kind of only going diagonally. And the reason for that is we have X, we have Y, but we use the exact same modifier without any offset. So it's using the exact same data uh, to wiggle our camera, which means it's kind of combining these two proportionally at, with the same magnitude, so you get diagonal motion. So same amount of X, same amount of Y makes diagonal. So what we need to do, and again, a better way to illustrate this, look at the shape of this wave, and then if I can find, yeah, there it is. We have the exact same wave just down here. So we are just gonna offset this so that we get a different looking wave in our um, in and out point uh, segment, basically what is in our Blender project. Um, there, there has to be a good word for this. Our interval is one way to say this. Uh, we get a different wave than our X axis. And now it looks a bit more random. It kind of looks more like circular motion. Again, we are gonna go to Z, Euler rotation and we are going to paste. Again, we're gonna offset so it doesn't look exactly the same. So let's offset some, something like that. And now you have rotation in X, Y, and Z. And of course, these are independent of each other. It's a different modifier for each uh, X, Y, and Z. So we can actually have it have a very strong uh, scale on one of them, and an un or in another, we can have it have a large amplitude, etc. They, they're independent. But the cool thing about this is this is only our rotation. So we can have our camera, let's say on frame one, it's over here, I'm going to keyframe the location. And then on frame 100, let's say, whoops, on frame 100, we are going to have our camera move very, very close to the cube. It's approaching, it's a sweaty cameraman that's shaking. And I think that was on frame 101, but that's fine. And now you can see that we have the motion as well as our camera shake. Of course, it doesn't look too good because it's kind of drifting over it. But then you also have to, um, the way you would fix that is you want to have your camera shake, but you also want to kind of direct the motion. And you can just add a animation you make, um, just you know one that you make manually to this camera shake. So um, you can mess with the modifiers and all that. Basically, you just animate it by hand. You know what, I'll show you, I'll show you. So we're just gonna make a new camera this is the best camera shake tutorial there will ever be. Um, let's say you have a camera here. It has a, uh, whatever, it has a location. And then at the last frame, it has another location. And then we're also going to say that the rotation is whatever it is here. And then by the end, we want it kind of facing upwards. So let's rotate it on the Y like that. So right now our animation just looks like a sweeping crane with the uh, camera pointing upwards. And this is what it looks like in our graph. Well, we can still do the same kind of thing with our shake. So let's just, we don't have to do it for all these, but let's just do X rotation, for example. We are gonna add a modifier. It's gonna be set to noise. And you can see it's adding our noise, but with the same kind of uh, graph from before. So let me show you, it's sweeping up like this. But uh, if we add noise, still working, right? So basically this procedural stuff is separate from anything we keyframe. So yeah, there you go. You now know how to make camera shake. If you want to fund these tutorials, I have a Patreon, but other than that, that's it.